Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary with a knife video for you. Today I want to talk about selling knives. Now, let me say right off the bat, this is not a for sale video. I'm not sell I'm not wanting to sell any of my knives, but I want to talk about some, some tips and some considerations that might be helpful to you if you decide to sell something of yours. Okay, first off, let me say this. Most YouTubers and even a lot of knife collectors, uh, yes, they collect, but within that whole collection deal, there is some selling going on. Maybe they're selling knives that they decide they don't like anymore. Maybe they've decided to either upgrade or downgrade their collection. Maybe they collected higher end knives and now they'd like to move into more, more mid-range knives. Maybe they've collected mid-range knives and they want to uh, start moving in a direction that's more higher end. Maybe they want to go to mid-techs or customs. Okay, there are lots of reasons that a lot of collectors and a lot of YouTubers will sell their knives. In fact, some guys who have tons of videos about all kinds of different knives really only own a very small number. All right, that can happen. Um, my collection, I, I honestly don't know. It probably, it floats between 50 and 100 knives, uh, and I do sell some. There'll be some that I'll never sell. There'll be others that I sell to finance something specific, and I still love the knife. And in fact, uh, there have been knives where I've sold it and later on bought another one because I really like the knife. I just needed the money right at that moment to buy you know, something else, okay? So, I wanna talk about selling knives. First of all, I don't think it's wrong to sell your knives. I don't think you're less of a collector. Uh, I don't think anything like that. Um, it's just one of those things that sometimes goes along with the knife hobby is you gotta sell something once in a while, either to make room in your collection for something else or to finance something else. Uh, so, uh, one last point is knives are one of those unique things where you can sometimes do that, okay? Uh, some knives will hold their value fairly well. And that's the first point that I actually wanna make. So if you're gonna sell a knife, make sure you know what it's worth. Okay, it's not fair to you to get screwed on a deal. I don't think anyone needs to do that. And it's not fair to others uh, to, to treat them unfairly, all right? If you go to a lot of sites where you can buy and sell knives, the, the patrons of that site are pretty informed. So if you overprice something, just no one will buy it, okay? Uh, but uh, I don't think it's cool either to maybe even purposely, you could, and, and you know, there are places where people are more and less informed. Uh, don't go to a place where you know people aren't gonna know the value of something and try to try to sell it for more than it's worth. That's not cool either. But number one, know what your item is worth, okay? And understand that some things are gonna hold their, their value better than others. Certain brands, I, I'm not even sure why, but for example, cold steel knives, uh, don't tend to hold value super, super well. Now this one, in fact, is not bad. Uh, I have seen these sell on the forums for around 80 or $90, uh, and you can buy them new for, I don't know, 110. That's not bad, okay? Uh, Essie is a company that tends to hold its value really well. You know, this is, I don't know, I think I paid about 100 bucks, and I'd probably sell it for close to 100 bucks, maybe 80, 90, whatever. Um, something a little more budgety, like a SOG Aegis, this is not gonna hold value well, okay? Um, you're, you're not gonna likely be able to sell this for close to what you paid for it, unless you paid very, very little, all right? Uh, maybe you only paid 20 bucks, well sure, you can probably get that, all right? So, know what your item is worth, know what holds value and what doesn't going in, okay? Uh, if you're buying a, a Spyderco Sprint Run, generally they hold the value pretty well. You're probably gonna get most of what you paid back out of it, all right? And that's, that means it can be fairly safe. Higher end knives, uh, this is not super high end, but it's higher end. Um, this is a uh, Riate or Riat Knives Remedy. Uh, something like this is gonna hold its value pretty well. Things like Striders and Hinderers and Sebenzas generally hold their value pretty well. Now, Hinderers have come down quite a bit recently, but that's because they were crazily inflated. Uh, so be aware of that as well. You know, if you've got a knife and you feel like the price is inflated, better sell it, right? Unless you, you know, it could come back down, all right? Be aware of that as well, what, what ha what's happening in terms of trends. So know the value of your item, that's number one. Number two, uh, it's nearly always a bad idea to buy a knife as an investment, okay? That, that is just not a good investment. There are lots of good reasons to buy knives, you just like them. 
uh, you want to try something new or different or interesting, you know it's a new steel, it's a new locking mechanism, uh, you don't have a knife of that size in that size range and you want to see if you like it, uh, those are all, hey, go ahead, buy a knife, great. But probably not a good idea to buy a knife thinking I'm going to sell it for more. There are some rare exceptions and if you really know the market well, you might be able to find a good deal now and then. Even then, I would recommend if you get a great deal. So this is a, a, an S35 VN Sprint Run, really cool. These guys usually go for around 140, maybe top end 160. Okay, so let's say you log on to your favorite knife website one day and you see them selling, you see one that's been posted for sale for like $90, all right? And you go, wow, that's a great deal, and you jump on it. Number one, make sure it's a real thing. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But let's say it's, it's all legit. And you buy this for 90 bucks. Um, I have no problem with you selling it for 120, 130. Uh, I try, if, if that happens to me, and it has happened to me a couple times, I'll try to give the next purchaser a break too. You know, maybe you buy a $400 knife and you buy it for 250. Well, uh, rather than rather than sell it for 400, and if you do that, I'm not I'm not mad at you or anything. Sell it for what it's worth. But generally speaking, I would say, hey, I'll sell it for 300 or maybe 350, right? I'm, I'm going to give the next buyer a bit of a break too, since I got a break. Okay, and I think that's just kind of courtesy. I don't think it's it's re required, but it's just not a it's just a nice thing to do. Let's put it that way. So know what it's worth. Don't buy knives as investments uh, with, with, uh, with some very, very, very rare exceptions. And if you don't know what you're doing, just don't even bother. All right. Number four, be honest. Painfully honest. Okay. Make sure that you go over the knife carefully, that you don't miss anything. Sometimes when you're selling something, you, you're describing it. It could be that you just missed something. Okay. And if you're afraid of that, or if it's a fast sale, let's say... Uh, I know I've got a knife sitting in my collection, but I've, I'm away that day and I need the money and I say, yeah, I want to buy something else. Let's sell that fill in the blank that's sitting on my shelf at home. Now, I don't know all the details, so I need to lower my price a little bit and I need to say, hey, I, this knife has been used, it has been carried, it's not in perfect condition, but it's certainly more than functional. Here's what I want for it, okay? Uh, that's generally not a good idea. You're better off to examine the knife in detail and you know here's a good example Cold Steel Swift very popular knife a great 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 knife this has the slightest bit and I mean the slightest bit of blade plate you can barely feel it now it hasn't always and most of the time triad locks they may develop a bit of blade play but it will go away because what happens is the, the lock uh, will work its way further into the, the cutter in the back of the blade, and then that blade play will go away. So it may have blade play, for, play, blade play for a couple days, and then that blade play will vanish, okay? But if you're selling this knife, you make sure you disclose that it has a teeny bit of blade play. Uh, yes, it's almost imperceptible, but, it, but it's there, and you need to let people know about it. Okay, you know, there's a scratch, there's a whatever, there's a mark on the G10. Uh, I tried to use that trick that Cutlery Lover did to open a beer bottle and, uh, you know, I, I put a scratch on the handle. Whatever it is, just be honest when you're trying to sell a knife. You don't want someone to buy it, get it, and then they find something wrong and they want their money back. Okay, that really sucks. Especially if you were selling it to buy something else and now you've already spent the money and now they're like, hey, I want my money back. And you're like, Crap, I don't have it. Uh, bad deal, right? So be honest, painfully honest. Don't overlook anything when you're selling something. Uh, number four, I think we're on number four. Be sure, okay? Make sure that you really want to sell it. Don't change your mind halfway through. That's really not cool. Since sometimes you'll have to give up something and, and just go ahead and sell it even after you kind of changed your mind and said, you know, it's, it's not cool, especially after the person has already paid you and all this. Uh, the only way I would back out of a deal is, let's say I described a knife, let's say I was selling this knife and I was describing it, I said this, 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 and then after I'd already made the deal, I was looking at the knife and I found something new, okay? I would, I would right away send them a message, and this is just part of communication, I would send 
and which is my next point, I would just send them a message and say, look, there's a scratch I forgot to tell you about. Here's a picture of it. Uh, if you're still okay, that's fine. But if you don't, if you want to back out, uh, you know, that, that would be about the only time that I would back out of a sale is if I found something in the that I forgot to mention in the description or that I just didn't know about. Uh, communicate. That brings me to my next point, which is communicate. Lots of things can happen. If you're honest, most people will be okay with it. Uh, I'll tell you two very quick things that actually happened to me. One time, I put a bunch of knives up for sale on a Thursday. I was planning to sell them on Friday. They all sold right away. So I got a bunch of these yellow envelopes from Dollarama. I addressed them all. I had all the knives in there ready to go. That afternoon, I got an emergency call uh, requiring me to travel out of town, which meant I was not going to get those knives for in the mail Friday. It was not going to happen. So, and in fact, I wasn't going to be back till Monday night. So I actually just wrote a message and said, look, uh, I, and I made sure I sent, I think it was about three knives. I, I'm guessing here a little bit, maybe it was two or four, um, but it wasn't that many. So I sent some messages out saying, look, I'm really sorry. I've got to go to town. I will not be able to get your knife in the mail till Tuesday. I'm really sorry. That's, I, I'm real, I'm just stuck. Okay. Make sure you communicate. Another quick thing that happened is I went to send a bunch of knives that I had. In this case, maybe it was only one, but I went to the post office and said, hey, I need to ship this. They're like, well, we can do that, but our computer is down, so we cannot track it, we cannot insure it. I'm like, seriously? Uh, I've done two different things. One time I said, hey, look, I'll come back tomorrow. Another time I said, um, hey, I'll send, it, I'll send it now uh, just with a what I did was I chose an option where the time was the same. It was still going to take five days to get there. Just now it wasn't going to be tracked. Um, and, and honestly, the reason I've done both is because you don't know what to do in that situation. And I just kind of picked what I thought was best. All right. Uh, but in both cases, I right away went back to the office and sent a message to the buyer saying, look, uh, here's what happened and here's what I did about it. Okay. Again, the point is communication. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, that's number five, I think. Number six, don't commit to buy something before. So normally, if I'm selling a, selling something, let's say I decide to sell this Doc Brown. Generally speaking, I'm selling it to, to help me finance something else, okay? So I wanna buy, you know, let's say there's a there's a mid-tech that I've really been looking for and, and I've only got a hundred bucks and I need an extra $200. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sell this Doc Brown. That'll give me the 300 I need to buy this, whatever. Okay, uh, never, ever, ever commit to buy the new thing unless you've already sold and got the money for the first thing. Okay, even if someone says, hey, I'll take it. If you haven't got money in your hand, don't commit to buy something else. Okay, just a bad idea. Now, you may be able to say to the person that, you know, let's say you've been wanting an SE3 and you see one for sale and you say, hey, I'm willing to sell my Cold Steel Swift to get the SE3. So you write the person a message and say, look, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna sell this. As soon as I have the money from it, I'll pay for that. Would you please hold the knife for me? They may say no, be, be willing to deal with that. But they may say, yeah, that's fine. I'll hold it for you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you one day, whatever. By the way, if you're going to do that, you should spec you should come up with it in the first place. You know, I, I've often said before, you know, look, can you hold this knife for one day for me? If I don't have the money in one day, forget it. Just sell it to whoever. But I'm really going to try my best to get that money in one day. All right. And that's that I think is fine. And at least gives the, the seller an option to say yes or no. And then you can go and sell your thing. All right. By the way, You'll probably want to sell it at a cheaper price so that people will jump on it. Uh, number, where are we? Number seven, let's say. I think we're at number seven. Make sure that you uh, understand that sometimes a knife is, is kind of specialty. You know, if you're selling a knife like this, okay, uh, a Raja 2, a lot of knife people are just not interested in this knife. Okay, they're gonna say it's too big, I don't like the shape. You know, this is a very distinctive knife. It's, it's big, it's a particular shape, you may not, it's a recurve. Uh, a lot of people will not like it. Okay, so if I put this up for sale, I would not put it up expecting it to sell in a day because it just might not happen. Um, 
it's going to be, it's only going to sell when a person who wants that specific knife decides to buy it. And one of the things that isn't going to work in that case, let's say I put this up for $80 and after a day, no one's willing to pay me $80. So I drop it to $70 and then no one's willing to pay 70. So I drop it to 60. That you're kind of wasting your time with a knife like this because no one's going to buy it unless they're specifically interested in it. And that's, you've got to know when you're selling an item like that, you're looking for a very specific buyer and until they come along don't you, there's no point in dropping your price there's no point in trying to you know market it to a wider audience uh, well maybe there's a point in that then you might find that one person more easily uh, but there's no point even bo boosting your post uh, which you can do on a lot of, of selling forums it, there's no point until the person someone who wants that is gonna search it they're gonna come to you and they're gonna you know say hey I want to buy this uh, so trying to think if I've, oh yeah, one other thing. Um, part of communication, let's say you've got a knife like this. Now this is a SOG Zoom and it is amazing. It's way better than I would ever suspect and it's way better than most people would suspect. And so that's something you may, you want to say. If I, if I decided to sell this knife, I would probably sell it with a post of my review that I'll, that I'll do someday about this, probably in a, in a week or two. Okay, this is a really, really good knife. Way better than any budget SOG that I have ever tried. Okay, so I'm going to say that when I go to sell it because most people are going to look at this and be like, I'm not buying that. Now, I may not sell it. I actually like it quite a lot. So this is probably a knife that's not going anywhere. But if I decided to sell it, I would make sure to point out that, hey, this is way better than you think. And I would tell people why. All right, uh, a knife like, here's another SOG that serves as a good example. Aegis's are famous for up and down blade play. Every, well, any knife with this arc actuator lock often will have blade play. So if you get one that doesn't have blade play, you need to say, hey, look, this is better than buying new because I can personally vouch for this knife. I can tell you that it has no blade play, that it has no other mechanical issues. And sometimes knives come along that have a particular mechanical problem, and if you've got one that doesn't have that, then that's, a, that's an important thing to say when you're trying to sell it. All right, finally, the last thing that I wanna say is, it's your knife, it's your money, okay? It, however you wanna collect is cool, right? I'm not gonna get down on somebody who's, who, who tries to look for deals, all right? I'm not gonna get down on somebody who flips knives, okay? Uh, I know there was a, uh, maybe Carter recently made a video about that. Hey, if you buy a knife and it's a great deal, and, and you say, hey, I, I really just bought it because I knew I could sell it for more than I was paying, that's fine, you bought it, it's yours. Do whatever you want with it, okay? So. There you go, guys. What I'd like to hear in the comments below is some of your stories about great deals you've found, great transactions you've had. Maybe it's a it's a seller that, that paid extra for shipping even though you didn't ask them to and got it to you faster than you could have possibly hoped. Maybe it was a buyer that was just really good to deal with and maybe paid you a little extra for a knife that he, he warned you was a, was a, a price too low. You know, maybe you saw a mistake on a website and you were the one who sent them an email and said, hey guys, uh, you know, you've got a pair of two listed there for $55. Maybe that was your tenacious post and you accidentally put the wrong knife. You know, maybe you should, you know, whatever, whatever story you've got, I'd love to hear it in the comments below about a great deal that you made or found um, when you were selling a knife. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk to you soon.